Ask the Hour, Gene, your new piece for The Washington Post is entitled Biden won the South Carolina primary by 94 points. Trump could never. And you write in part, quote, Democrats in South Carolina, having helped catapult Biden to the nomination and the presidency in 2020, did their best to repeat the trick. He won a near unanimous 96 percent of the vote in what was, after all, a contested primary. Some national polls have shown Anemic enthusiasm for Biden's reelection within his own party, but voters here apparently did not get the memo. Black voters cast roughly three fourths of the early vote. According to the state Democratic Party, though, they make up only about half the state's Democratic electorate. There is no ironclad guarantee that Trump will win the primary in South Carolina at all, though polling has shown him well ahead. Nikki Haley can look at Saturday's turnout and hope that some Democrats stayed home so they can weaken Trump by voting for her in the GOP contest. When Republicans hold their South Carolina primary on February 24th, Trump might well defeat Haley in her home state. But to equal Biden's victory margin, he would have to win by 94 points. So who exactly is dominating his party's race for the nomination. And, and, and Gene, that, you know, that was a question everybody freaked out after Iowa. And then you realize only 14 yeah. percent of Republicans, Republicans mm -hmm. in Iowa, yeah. only 14 percent, which is probably, I don't know, what is that? Probably 5 percent of the vote in Iowa came out mm -hmm. and voted for Donald Trump. And the yeah. field was split and everybody's freaking out like, you know, uh, Trump is this person that can't be beaten. He's winning with like 50 percent, 55 percent of the vote. Yeah. If, like you said, Biden, 94 percent. I've always said if Obama were running in the Democratic primary, he'd get 98 percent of the vote. <laughs> really? I mean, look, I it just I just think that if you get 96 percent of the vote and you beat your nearest competitor by 94 points, um, you, you ought to get some notice for that. And 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 in fact, um, you know, look, I was down in South Carolina. It was a low turnout uh, primary. Most people thought there wasn't much suspense. Um, nonetheless, he got 96 percent of the vote. And if you looked into the numbers, you saw that all the stuff about, you know, African-Americans are going to abandon Biden for this reason or for that reason. African-Americans were, were overrepresented in terms of the people who came out to vote. And they were very enthusiastic about Joe Biden, and um, they essentially were telling him, we got this, uh, Mr. President. So it was by any measure, as far as I could see, a very good day for Joe Biden. And I think that needs to be uh, acknowledged. It was not a good day for Dean Phillips or Marianne Williamson, who finished with about 2 percent each. Uh, and again, yeah. they were running in South Carolina. And uh, uh, the question of whether Democrats, at least in that state, really want to look at, a, at, at an alternative to President Biden as a Democratic candidate has been answered. I mean, and yes, again, it has. And again, Willie, the thing, the thing again, the, the number that we're just not looking at right now, and I know people are looking at polls and Democrats, there might be a lot of Democrats, and I'm not going to vote for Biden. I'm not, I don't know who I'm going to vote for laying back. Those voters come home. We say it every four years. I'm going to say it again, especially if Donald Trump is the Republican. Those Democratic voters come home. And the question is, do all those Republican voters come home? Do the one third of Republicans who say they will never vote for Donald Trump? Do they come home to Donald Trump? The answer we saw in 2020 is no, not all of them, because a lot of them don't believe that Donald Trump's Republican Party is their home. They believe Ronald Reagan, George Bush and Mitt Romney and John McCain's Republican Party is their home. As our friend Jim Messina says, the best way to predict how people will vote is to watch how they vote. So now we've seen some voting and we saw it happen <laughs> instead of all these polls and going back and forth to which one to believe and which not to believe. We saw how they voted in South Carolina, as you and Gene said, a massive number, not huge turnout, but a massive number uh, for President Biden. 
Um, we were talking yesterday about the NBC poll, which had some discouraging news top to bottom for President Biden. Comes on the heels of some other polls where he was actually doing better head to head with Donald Trump. It's hard to know where it all settles out. Um, but at this moment, with what, eight, 12, 10 months ahead of the election, um, how are they feeling at the White House right now? Yeah, we can safely say the election is this year. Yeah, when exactly. <laughs> some quick math failed me there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I mean, first of all, the biggest thing about polls is that it is February, and the election yeah. is many, many months from now. Uh, the, you're right. The White House was liked some of the polls they were seeing recently. The one over the weekend, less so, you might imagine. And there are some real warning signs there, uh, including among independents. But... Largely, the White House feels pretty good about where they are. They know the economy is going to be a major issue, as we're going to talk about in a moment. They're still not really getting credit uh, for the improvements there. But they have their own polling that shows that, that President Biden is doing pretty well with independents, those swing voters who you know, often decide these elections, that Trump won in 16 and very much did not win in 20. There's no sign those voters are going back to Trump for 2024. So the Democrats feel good about them. So they recognize it is a base issue. And right now, they candidly admit they have issues with their base, with voters of color, with progressives. The war in the Middle East playing a big part in that. But they also feel like they've got time to win them back. They can point to their accomplishments. And more than that, uh, Mika, there are two outside forces here. One, they believe this, like the last couple of elections, will be in part decided by abortion rights. And they feel like choice will drive voters back to Donald Trump. And they also feel to Joe Biden. And they feel like because Donald Trump is going to be the name on the other side of the ticket, there will be people out who will, may not love Joe Biden, but they're going to make the choice to vote for him again because they can't stomach the idea of going back to Trump. I mean, can can you imagine? I, I mean, I can imagine being a Republican because I was a Republican. Good chunk of my adult life. But can you imagine being a Republican right now uh. and knowing what you're headed for? That's what shocks me about what they're doing in the House. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say it again. Donald Trump lost in 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23 went out of his way to lose the United States Senate for Republicans. All Republicans know this. They all hate him for it. And yet they're following off the cliff again. Nobody, nobody trying to stand as a check. Mitch McConnell now not trying to stand as a check between uh, Donald Trump and a political catastrophe for Republicans. They're keeping the border open. The Wall Street Journal says they've chosen to keep the border open for another year. By saying no to a border security bill that the, the Wall Street Journal editorial page is saying, Trump can even the it. toughest border restrictionists could have never dreamed of getting three months ago what they're getting now. And yet they're saying no. In the time of crisis, when the crisis is at the border is the worst that it's been, Republicans are at the gates and they're keeping them pulled open to keep the fentanyl flooding in, to keep the illegal immigrants flooding in. We saw what happened in New York City with, with, with just a flood of migrants coming into the United States, cities not being able to handle it, uh, people along the border not being able to handle it. And we have a solution. We have a solution. And Mike Johnson goes, no, thank you. No, thank you. Is That's what he says. No, thank you. All right. Just let, 